Hello, everyone out in gun podcasting land. I'm Zeke, here with my partner Left Hand at our Talking Lead headquarters in Middle Tennessee. And this is the inaugural episode of a fun gun and all things related podcast, which is the culmination of a couple of friends' love for all things firearms. So, on behalf of Left Hand and myself, here it is. The first of many more to come weekly Talking Lead podcast. That's right, everybody. This is the first Talking Lead podcast. I'm Zeke. I'm here with Left Hand. Hey, Zeke. And What's up, buddy? this is our first little uh, delving into uh, podcasting world. Um, I'm excited about it. I am, too. This is new to me. We get, I'll, I'll have to get rid of all the uhs as I'm trying to think, but, you know, we'll, we'll get, get better there. as we go. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we'd love uh, tips and tricks from the listeners. Yep. Uh, that's kind of one of the things we want to talk about right up front. Our email is talkingled at gmail. Is that right? Gmail. At gmail.com. Talkingled at gmail.com. And we got Twitter. We have a Twitter. Uh, it's just at talkingled. We also have a Facebook. Uh, once again, talkingled at facebook.com. I don't know. How do you say that? Facebook? Yeah. Talkingled at facebook.com? Just search. Yeah. Just search talkingled. I think so. Okay. Yeah. It'll and I think up. you can just like us. I don't know if we can be friends because I think we had to set it up as a business. But, you know, like you us. can like us if you, you like it. like us. Leave us messages. All one, two of you out there listening right now. This show's not just for us. It's for you, too. It's more for us because we we got together, um, Zeke and I, very avid gun lovers, enthusiasts, outdoors. And, uh, you know, we're just new into this, and we'd like to learn more ourselves about this. So we're relying on you, the listeners, to help educate us also. Absolutely. Um, we're both, you know, semi-newbies. We we both grew up around guns. We're, we're Oh, we've been around guns all our lives. Yeah, but we've just now, within the last, like, developed what, a couple of years for you? For you know, we've developed an affinity for it, become collectors. About four years now, I've gotten heavy into it yeah. absolutely and and me i'm i'm just a few months in uh but i i'm you I'm, are a newbie i am a newbie but we want all the newbies out there listening to join us in being newbies in the learning experience and, and listen the seasoned and, veteran as well sure you know, that that's who we're relying on to to correct us and uh, get us educated and keep us headed in the right direction yeah a couple of things we want to do going down the road too uh, we want to start taking some trainings uh, different places around the country, and we'll review those trainings and say, hey, this place in Timbuktu, Arkansas was phenomenal, and this place in blank Oklahoma was horrible. Don't go. Okay, we maybe won't be that cruel, but, you know. And if, if you guys know some places, especially locally, like I said, we're in the middle Tennessee area, um, you know, we'd like to, to keep everything local as much as possible as well. And if you do trainings, if you're a trainer, if you're an instructor, contact us. Let us know. Like I said, at at um, Talking Lead for Twitter and also TalkingLead at gmail.com. Uh, let us know if you have certain trainings you'd like us to come and review for you. We'll be glad to show up and uh, take the class and do a little review on our podcast. Absolutely. would love to do that. Um, so once again... TalkingLead at gmail.com for any suggestions you have for subject matter you'd like us to cover. Um, same thing with our Twitter, uh, at TalkingLead on Twitter, and we also have the Facebook. Um, let's get started. Uh, we're going to go through little individual intros. Uh, we got Left Hand over here. Uh, he's not going to go too much into his name. He's got kind of a high profile in society Whatever. job, and uh, you know we got to keep him keep him secret cool. here. So, uh, so we'll start <laughs> off with left hand over here. He's going to introduce himself, tell how he got into guns in this most recent incarnation of guns, the last four years. Well, I mean, again, I, you know, like I said, I've been around guns and in guns all my life. You know, grew up with them, hunting with my my father, my grandfather. I got two older brothers. 
Uh, so guns have always been around the house and, and you know, part of my life. Um, you know, just recently, you know, handguns and sporting rifles, um, sports shooting, you know, that mm-hmm. type thing uh, has developed. And that that's what I've, you know, really grown to, uh, here recently anyway, to, to really appreciate and, uh, you know, love. Absolutely love it. Um, wish I'd have developed this affinity years ago, but uh, is what it is. Doing it now, um, not going to change the direction I'm headed with it. Um, handgun wise, um, you know, I don't know. If we want to talk about how many guns we own or how we want to mm, go about that. But we may uh, not want to put make that public knowledge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, we borrow some guns and we keep them for a few days sure. and then give them back to who they have it's a, it's a not close-knit community and uh <laughs> we try each other's <laughs> weapons out and, and give them back to one another absolutely once we're, once we're through um or as jesse ventura says i gave all my guns away there you go which i really believe me, a navy seal would truly give every one of his guns away to his wife yeah i'm sure yeah, sure it's like g gordon liddy absolutely he doesn't own a gun no but his wife does right um but we're going to talk about our first can he? Isn't he a felon? Or no, he was he Watergate cannot. a felony? He he cannot. That's what I thought. But but his, his wife, wife can. can. Gotcha. Absolutely. Gotcha. She's, she's not a felon. Right. So, okay. However that works. I'm not an attorney. Don't claim to be one. So uh, <laughs> once again, let's put a little disclaimer. We are not attorney. Attorneys. 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 We are not attorneys. We are not experts. We have no, the knowledge that we have. We're trying to make it more. And uh, so don't take our legal advice. <laughs> don't take any of our advice yet. Yet. We're just learning. Absolutely. If we say something stupid, please email us. Please say something on Twitter. Let us know. Go easy on us, though. Yeah. I mean, the the, the, the the definition of expert I read once, and I love this. I apply it to work and everything else. An expert is a person who has made every mistake you can possibly make in a subject and learned from it. And Although, learned from it. Key. With firearms, I don't uh, want to make every mistake. No. Yeah, it's going to be kind of dangerous. You want to make that theoretically. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's why you have the training courses, which is what we want to get more involved with Absolutely. as well. So, uh, you know, back back to your intro. Well, well in, in, in this culmination of your, your knowledge mm-hmm. and your enthusiasm, what was the first gun that kind of triggered that? I, w- I would have to say um, it was the Glock. Which one? Well, I didn't have a, you know, when I first started, I didn't know, you know, a Glock 21 from a Glock 30. Mm-hmm. You know, I, d- I didn't know what all that meant. I didn't know, you know, calibers, didn't know what a 9 millimeter was, didn't know what a 40 caliber was. Mm-hmm. Didn't know what a 38, 357, you know, I didn't know what any of that was. I just knew that they were different bullets right. that, you know, a gun could fire. Right. Didn't know the purpose of one or the benefits of one over the other, so... You know, it's just, you know, like anything, when you first start, it's just kind of trial and error. Sure. So, you know, I talked to a bunch of friends, asked them, you know, their opinions. Um, went to a lot of gun shops, you know, asked the owners, uh, the people working there, got their opinions. And my first handgun ended up being a Glock 22, 40 caliber. Which caliber? 40 caliber. It has a 40 caliber. Right. So it's the full size Glock. In the forty caliber, the twenty-seven would be the the subcompact, and the, the twenty-three is in between those two. Gotcha. Uh, those are all forty calibers. Um, so that's one thing I haven't really gotten down pat yet is which Glocks are what caliber. I know the thirty-four, the seventeen, and nineteen. They're nineteen are definitely nine, right? Nineteen, seventeen, and, and thirty-four. The, the twenty-six. Twenty-six 30, and thirty-four. Thirty-four. Yeah. Thirty-four is a nine. Yeah, because that's the one, that's my next gun. I researched the 34, it. Right? Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> why, why are you going towards the thirty-four? I want to do competitions next year. Okay, I was going to say because yeah. it's more of a, a, a competition yeah. type. I want to get into competitions and all the research. I've either leaned. I, I'm I'm going back and forth. I've talked to some buddies that love the XDMs, the competition model. Got some. And of those then too. you know I've talked to people that the thirty-four is the way to go. So anyway, yeah. there well, you go. And, interrupting and, you. And again. the way it is, just get one and see how you like it. Sure. You know, absolutely. And you know, that's the great thing about the gun community. Like we were saying earlier, is you know we have friends that have different guns than we have, and 
they don't mind us, you know, switching guns, trying them out. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you try that Glock for a while. You feel like maybe there might be a better thing than, you know, switch up to an XDM, try it out for a while. Oh, yeah. And, and definitely when you go, if you are a newbie and you're thinking about buying a gun, before you buy that gun, go rent it. Go find somebody that has that gun. Shoot it. Go to the range, shoot it. Absolutely. Because I was in a class, and I took, a, I took the uh, concealed carry class with some friends of ours. And we went to a big uh, range and gun shop here in, here in Nashville. And they wanted, his wife wanted the Smith & Wesson bodyguard. She was like, oh, it's so cute. Oh, it's got a built in, built in laser. <laughs> it oh, pink? it's so awesome. No, it wasn't pink. She actually picked the black one. He, before the class even started, bought her this because she didn't have a gun yet. Mm-hmm. They could have rented it, but he said, you know, if that's what you want, I want to get it for you. It comes down to the range time. She could not hit the broadside of a barn with that gun. She was all sure over the place. Was the gun. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was. I mean, because you know, one thing I've learned is the lighter the gun, the smaller the gun, the more recoil it's actually going to have. You want a heavier gun, the physics yeah. of it kind of. And if you hear me talk about physics, I'm kind of a geek in that way. I, I'll get into to my 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 intro or later. I'm gonna yeah, we get all ADD. Intro, yeah. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't want to stop yours. But anyways, she buys the gun. She she can't shoot it for, for anything. Um, the range guy, our instructor, said, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'll let you rent you know, a Glock. I think she got a Glock 17 yeah. for free, 9 millimeter. She was dead on bullseye every time with that gun. It's a heavier gun. Had a little less recoil than the, even the little 380 bodyguard. I mean, I, I was watching her, and it was knocking her hand all over the place. Hmm. But... Now we go back to the lesson learned from maybe this. Maybe she respected it a little more because it was bigger. Maybe, maybe that's too. That it, it could be that too. Yeah, because I've seen those bodyguards shot. I've got a brother-in-law who's oh, in sure. law enforcement, and uh, it's one of his backups. And I and mean, I'm sure he's had training before too. Well, well I would we hope so if he's in out, law enforcement. Well, I mean, we we go out and shoot, and <laughs> no. you know, he was practicing his quick draw. You know, with just the laser. You know, just putting it, the laser yeah. on target and just quick shooting. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, he was yeah. right on at the time. Well, this was only her first time shooting ever. <clears throat> and well, she you, shot you know, and that comes into play. So, I think, yeah. you know, that's something that also you got to take into consideration. Uh, just don't discount a gun right off the bat. Right. Because it could be, you know, oh, yeah, you, it's just you might not be, you know, treating the gun the way it should be treated in order for it to shoot properly sure. as well. Yeah. Well. Like you say, it's training. Yeah. And we go back to. She should have tried it out first. She hated it. She didn't before, like it. Yeah, before yeah. they laid down. And, and the, know, sad, bucks on the sad, scary thing is, if this wouldn't have been a class or anything like that, if it would have just been some boyfriend or husband bringing his wife or girlfriend in to shoot and she had that bad of experience, she may have walked away and never shot a gun again. Luckily, it was a class. The instructor got in there and said, no, let's try this one. She shot. She still loves it. Right. Um, you know, it's one of those things where, like I said, rent a gun, borrow it from a buddy, try it out before you go drop, you know, anywhere from three to, to seven hundred dollars. Yeah, absolutely. You know, don't you do want, it in your living room. Yeah, well, not smart. First time out, you know, you don't want to go in your, you know, your backyard if you got property or something like that. Too, go go to a range where there's professionals there, and if you have questions, then you know they can. Yeah, our homeowners some, associations usually don't like that, do they? <laughs> well, it depends. On, if you're in the county or, you know, where mm. you're at. Uh, I think our homeowners association would actually shoot me for shooting in my backyard. I think you would go to jail. So yeah. don't, don't do that. They don't like me very much. Keep it, <laughs> keep it at the range for now. So, anyways, so you got into Glocks. Yeah, I got, I got into Glocks. Uh, like I said, I did the research, and uh, a couple of these places I went to, I mean, there were actual law enforcement people there, and they were like, you know, dude, get get the Glock 22. You know, mm. go with the 22. You don't want the 9. You don't want the 45. The 40 caliber is, you know, like the happy meeting. It's like the porridge, you know, that, that Goldilocks you know, sure. falls into, you know, every time. So The porridge that Goldilocks falls, falls into. into. Like the bed. I hadn't know. heard that story. <laughs> I've heard where she ate some porridge, but I don't think, I think I've ever heard where she fell into. version where she gets into the, uh, the porridge. But, uh, I think I did see that in college. Anyways, go ahead. happy meeting. <laughs> Um, and I like the four. I don't have nothing against the forty caliber. I like the round. Uh, I think I think it is a good happy medium between the two. It's not not too punchy, and it's uh, got enough punch, uh, a little more than the the nine millimeter. But mm-hmm. at the time, I didn't know that, obviously. Um, but uh, I still have that gun. That was about four years ago. Like I said, it's a Glock twenty two. Uh, got a little crimson trace on it. Um, done a little color fill on it. 
Um, uh, it's something we can talk about in another show as far as the color feel goes. Um, I like to uh, color coordinate my calibers. Uh, so when I grab a magazine, I'm not uh, putting the wrong caliber in a gun. It's just easily recognizable right off. Um, but yeah, the, the Glock 22 was my first handgun, and like I said, I still own that gun, and uh, I love it. It's one of my primary carries as well. Very cool. What about you, bro? Let's see. A little background on me. Uh, similar, uh, not as an ex- as as extensive hunting background growing up. I did hunt growing up. I was born in, born in Texas. We moved to Tennessee when I was in uh, late elementary, early junior high. Um, and, of course, in Texas, you know, you come out of the womb and the nurse is standing there with a twenty two to hand you. So, yeah. you know, we're, we're born with a gun in our hand. Um, yeah. Uh, I shot my first twenty two. shot a rabbit when I was seven years old. Never forget it. On a friend's on ranch. Purpose. Huh? On purpose. Oh, on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> first shot. <laughs> First shot Look ever, I killed a rabbit. Look at you. It was awesome. Um, and it was on a friend's ranch, friends of my parents, and the guy uh, made rattlesnake belts and hats, and he trapped rattlesnakes. And he had a, almost a whole other house where he kept all these rattlesnakes. And I'll never forget, I shot that rabbit, and he was like, you seem like you're getting a little cocky over that. So he takes me out to that little house where the rattlesnakes are, says, locks me in the truck, said, okay, you stay right there. And he brought out a box of rattlesnakes and poured them on the hood of the truck. It's probably why I hate and snakes what now. What point was he trying to make? Uh, did, you know, I needed to come down a little bit for my high horse <laughs> okay. at seven years old, I guess. Anyways, I I've never liked extreme. snakes since. Anyways, um, get, if you if you haven't noticed, I'm I'm a tad bit ADD, and my medication starts wearing off about the time that we meet to do this podcast. Okay, Deep so man. about me. We said the Texas thing, guns. Uh, moved to Tennessee, of course, you know, in the South guns is it's it's a way of life you know went hunting a few times here um i get into college um had a first gun i ever bought around 22 years old was a little lorson 380 and it was a piece of crap um no comment no comment uh but oh wow i think we just lost any chance of lorson uh sponsoring us but yeah, as if we had a shot at anybody eh, that's oh, wait, okay we do have sponsors yeah we that's right we already do um so i had the little 380 and i took it out shooting in the in the backyard in the little uh, farmhouse we were living in at the time uh liked it it was fun but never really got into it as a hobby um or a sport, one, uh, or a sport. Yeah. I, w- I was in college at the time i just got it as self-defense because we lived in rural tennessee little farmhouse really close to the interstate there had been a lot of robberies it was around christmas there was a lot of robberies on interstate houses Mm -hmm. so i got it for that reason um i still enjoyed it but eventually uh met a um let's just say a past member of my life who did not like firearms uh, so I got rid of that gun. And, and well, you should have no guns around that person. I'll, I'll attest to that. I, know, I, I, I will know make sure she doesn't speaking. know about this podcast, so she will never hear these comments. <laughs> I know she does. But uh, so, anyways, uh, I got rid of the gun out of respect for her, um, and for seven years of my life, didn't do anything with guns. Uh, now I take that back. I did go deer hunting once. I got a doe, um, but that was about it. Um, Never really understood why I didn't get into it. I had a lot of friends. You were into guns. You took me to the range a couple of times. That's right. Uh, down in, um, I'm, I'm waiting for my credit here. Yeah, what am I yeah. Get he, t- he took to me to the range a couple of times. Once again, <laughs> I got a little bit of the bug at that time. But at the time, I couldn't. I wasn't allowed to have a gun in the house. So that past relationship ended. Bravo. And Bravo. my current lovely, wonderful, cheers. incredible wife uh comes from a family of gun enthusiasts and it was kind of like ooh, my chance to get back into firearms um the job i'm in now i i handle a lot of cash we can take anywhere from five to a hundred thousand dollars in one one day and i don't think you should be telling people that on the radio <clears throat> you're probably right my job in banking yeah i'm a banker that's it <laughs> anyways um <laughs> So I needed to get a firearm. My wife agreed. We went to a gun show and bought this little beauty. I got a Taurus 605 357 Magnum. Stainless. Uh, if you can hear it. 
I don't know if they can hear it. Anyways, uh, that's it right there. And he did uh, safety check. And I it, did it safety check. Okay. There is no ammunition in there. I showed Marty. We are good to go. Uh, so I bought that. And at the time, I was still at about the same place I was with the Lorson. Shot it a few times. Great. But I still liked it. Now, back to what I said earlier. I'm kind of the geeky version of it. My degree is in biology and psychology. And part of my biology degree, I had to take some science electives. So I got into the physics side of, 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 of all my electives. So when I heard all the physics involved with guns, when I started reading on the Internet, I was hooked. Ballistics, um, kinetic energy, terminal velocity, all these different things. I was just like, oh, I was eating it up. And within a matter of a couple of weeks of me researching this gun, because the geeky side of me had to know every single thing there was to know about this gun, Absolutely. I wanted another one. And I bought my wife a Taurus, or not a Taurus, yeah, it is a Taurus, Ultralight, 38 Special. Um, a gun she used to have that her father gave her as a gift, and it uh, sadly disappeared at some point in time. I uh, won't, go, won't go into that story. That's another touchy subject. But anyways, I, I, I did my best to find that gun, got it for her, uh, shot it a few times, got hooked again. Um, I'll go into some of the other guns I have on another podcast. I could ramble forever. But anyways, I, I got hooked. I, I love the study of firearms. It, it's very important for anybody that's successful and that works hard to have a hobby. I used to do triathlons. That takes way too much friggin' time in my day to do that. And I realize that's a crappy hobby to have and be a successful that's a crappy person. excuse is what that is. <laughs> right. It takes a lot of time. But this is something where I can study at night. I can read a magazine. I can read a book, read an Internet article. I can take it to the range, shoot a box of 50 in 15, and 20 minutes. you carry it with you all day long. I can carry it with me all day long. I don't have if to be riding a bike all day long, permit. swimming in the pool all day long. If I have a proper permit, which I do. Which you do. Um, Congratulations on that, by the way. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very You're much. Very um, so which I think everybody should look into that as well. Absolutely. Uh, whether, it, it, whether you plan on owning one or not, you should still go ahead and uh, take the class and go ahead and get your permit. Sure. It's, it's a you right that we all have. And, and one thing we'd like to mention, we, are, we want it to be a fun podcast. We don't want to get too crazy intense with a lot of stuff so we will try to keep the politics politics the hardcore politics on either side out of it we want to keep it political free and have it be a fun i'm going to steal this from the gun guy radio podcast sorry guys but uh we want it to be a fun positive light on the gun culture um, I, I love the way they say that. Absolutely. So if, if y'all ever listen to this, I, I stole it from you. I'm sorry. I won't use it again. But and just, again, that's not what this show is about. This show is about uh, you and I, right? Us mm-hmm. and and our quest to learn more about not only firearms but firearm related uh, issues and topics as well. Whether that's the gear, whether that's the uh, the training, the classes that go along with that. Sure. Yeah, as well, uh, you know, and like you said, yeah, even blades. You know, we get in we get, probably get into some blades, oh, yeah. talking knives, and you know things like that as well. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, as the show continues and matures, you know, so will our our subject matter. It, it's gonna we're be relying f- on uh, relying on you guys to help us in what direction we go from here as well. And it's gonna be fun to see what this kind of evolves into. You Absolutely. Know? There's there's a uh, there's a lot of uh, really good podcasts out there. Uh, involving uh, guns, firearms, self-defense. Um, Zeke, I have never listened to a podcast. I know. He hasn't. He really, really hasn't. <laughs> when you asked I told to him, this, I was like, I'm let's like, do a podcast. He said, sure, what is it? <laughs> I'm like, okay. I thought we were going to do something you know, geeky like he likes to do, something scientific, and go out and do some, <laughs> some rocket launching or something like that. Which, by the way, I forgot to mention, we do have a Talking Lead YouTube channel, which hopefully at some point in time we might get to shoot a rocket launcher or something. That'd be freaking awesome. Yeah. But we're going to do some video reviews of stuff on the on the YouTube channel. Yeah, that might be a little bit longer down the road because it's winter time. You know, but, trying uh, out trying out some of our guns and you know things like that. And we've 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 located a uh, we've procured a top secret location in Middle Tennessee. Absolutely. Uh, with many many acres, a haunted house. Uh, we will shoot some zombies out there. Um, I've heard that they they lurk in there a little bit. Yeah, Speaking of zombies, you know what you're gonna get. 
You know, the, an- another thing we want to kind of talk about on this this show, we want to review not necessarily a a movie, a show, a song, a video. We want to review the firearms in that said movie, show, song, video, video game. Video games, you know, huge. And, and, and we're w- both avid gamers. Yeah. Go ahead and yeah. say it. What are you talking about? I never game. Yeah. I'm, I'm 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 an educated individual, <clears throat> and I We're like COD-ers. to um, read books with my pipe. And okay, yeah, I like video games. Um, and, and we are. How would you describe our age? Middle age? Yeah, we're in our mid twenties. Sure, whatever. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we're we're that. we're in our we're in our late thirties, early forties. I'm in my early forties. Yeah, I'm I'm in my late thirties. So uh, yeah, we're 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 the older versions of the Gen Xers. Really? We're the last <laughs> the really last remaining of, Gen Xers uh, of that generation. So um we've kind of got a little bit of the baby boomer left in us, but we've also got a little bit of the generation what's behind us? Generation Y? But it's like W H Y, right? I don't know how they do that. Anyways. So we got a little bit of that in us. We're kinda of like smack dab in the middle. Yeah. We're we're the generation we're the leftovers heads, of the grunge I mean, heads. <laughs> grunge. I'm a little uh, bit before that. Even yeah, that, so. that's true. I'm a little bit older than you. Yeah. So, let's start off. Um, With? You know. Where are we going from here? I don't know if anybody's noticed this. You think, I don't know if anybody really watches this show. You think many people watch it? I haven't heard many people. Anybody heard of Walking Dead? Of yeah. course. Yes, okay. And if you haven't noticed, <laughs> our name might be a little play on those words. Talking Lead, Walking Dead, you know. We both like Walking Dead. We both enjoy the show. It's fun. The it, concept of the show really came from the Walking Dead when you know we started talking about the different weapons that they were using. Exactly. You know, from the guns to the spiked uh, two by fours to you know the, the the knives that they're using. Now, those of you out there that don't like Walking Dead, don't think that this show every week is going to be about Walking Dead. No, we'll just have a little review about one of the no, weapons like, they use. Like you yeah. said, I mean, we're you know we'll probably take a. a a different movie, a different TV show, a different song, you know, something that's, uh, you know, got a, a firearm or weapon or something like that in it and, you know, maybe discuss it. No. Like, like you and I were talking before we started this, you know, we were trying to decide on what Rick's gun was in The Walking Dead, what he uses. Right. And I thought it was a, a python. And I couldn't remember which one was the longer of the two, the python or the anaconda. And... We went back and forth. Did you ever find out? Did you ever look it up? No, I thought we were just we were gonna kind of leave that to our uh, listeners and somebody send it to us. Yeah. Hey, maybe that could be our first trivia question. What what yeah. revolver does Rick use in The Walking Dead? What's the uh, model, brand, and caliber? You know, it's funny. We're we're recording this. And is it and is it actually what they say it is? Yeah, we're recording this and we haven't actually posted it. We don't even know how many listeners we're gonna have. But hopefully at least that one or two will give us an answer of who, what gun it is that Rick Rick is using on The Walking Dead. Um, we'll although, be looking for those. you know, we'll definitely have to talk about Michonne's blade at one point in time. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's Absolutely. Awesome. So, you know, that, BA. That, that, that will be one of our subjects. Badass? She's a badass. Badass, yes. We yeah. can say badass. We, we we're going to try to keep this as clean as pos- possible, but we're also going to be as natural as possible. So if we slip up and you're offended, we apologize. Sorry, <laughs> slip of the tongue. It happens. Exactly. That's what she said. I'm yeah. sorry. Did I just say a, that's what she said? Joke. It is 2012, right? It, and that might be, it might help people uh, put a time frame on this too. December 18th. <laughs> Yeah, 2012. you know, like we said, we're new at this. Um, we may be recording it on December 18th, 2012, but by the time we figure out how to get it online, it may be like 2014, so we apologize for that, too, if we're way out of date with everything. It, it may be January. Or, hey, by the time you're listening to this, the world may have ended on December 21st, and, you know, you are just happen to find this in somebody's computer, and I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> I don't know how to comment to that. Yeah, I think the crickets <laughs> went off right there. Anyways, <laughs> so I don't believe in the end of the world bull crap. What know? this week the in guns will continue on. This week in uh, guns. What did, what did you do with guns this week? 
Well, this week, you know, again, it's we said it's the 18th, which is Tuesday. Mm-hmm. So I haven't done much this week with guns. Gotcha. But I have, um, you know, in light of the recent activity, and you know what I'm talking about, the recent yes. event that has happened in Connecticut, yes. which is very tragic and sad. Absolutely. Uh, I have noticed, I've been doing a little research, been online looking at um, uh, websites that, provide high capacity magazines mm-hmm. and firearms and just kind of seeing how they've been reacting mm-hmm. uh, to this and uh it's uh, very shocking uh from what i'm seeing uh i'm seeing a lot of reactions uh, alarmist reactions mm-hmm. uh seems like knee-jerk reactions where people aren't really thinking before they react mm-hmm. uh you know in particular there's a huge store can we say people's names on here sure dick's sporting goods has, uh, I said we were going to keep it clean. <laughs> well, was it you that was talking about the other day you, you, you were looking for a gun and you looked at a lot of dicks, sporting goods? <laughs> yeah. Or no, that may have been on another podcast I heard. <clears throat> I think that was on a podcast. So no, if I, I said, stole that from a podcast, I'm sorry. I said I went to a lot of dicks. Yes. That's, looking that's, for this particular gun. Ooh, all right, anyways. <laughs> then there are a lot of dicks in this industry, too. Yes. Dickheads. But anyway, um, uh you know they have taken the the stance and they are taking away certain rifles not not offering them for sale anymore being the uh nomenclature assault rifles which they aren't they're sport rifles um semi-automatic rifles so they've taken those off their shelves uh for one uh another you know bushmaster going and selling mm-hmm. you know they're they're coming I mean, all of freedom arms is being sold yeah I mean, it's, it, it's basically it's if you don't know what's going on with that there is a capital investment group uh that owned or it was the majority investor in freedom arms which owns bush Ma- bush master bush master gosh well, bush master bush, and dicks. bush oh, yeah and we're talking about a leafy tree and a store it's actually, um, it's actually a uh snake the bushmaster yeah oh, yes so anyways <laughs> bushmaster <Okay. laughs> or maybe d- never Keep mind going, i'm not going to say what the go. bushmaster is anyways uh so you know i totally just brain farted on you, that you were explaining the ownership of oh uh, yes so there's a capital investment group that owned freedom arms <laughs> and freedom arms is now up for sale so if you got a few million billion, I don't know what they're asking for well, it, but it's for cheap sale. Now. Just probably dump could, it. yeah. Dump it. I mean, they heck, with all the themselves away from with all the CNC machines and all the the machine shop stuff they got, you could make more than just the AR style rifle. But uh, who, who knows? Yeah, yeah uh, that's again, that's beyond my expertise. Yeah. I think they're jack wagons for for acting the way they are anyway. But yeah. uh, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. There's another website. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's called Cheaper Than Dirt. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were a huge uh, firearm uh, mm-hmm. retailer. Uh, completely wiped out their gun lines. No, you cannot buy a gun on there. You know that was going all. on. It happened just like that overnight. That was going on about two weeks ago too. Before I knew, once again, my wonderful, incredible wife bought me an AR for Christmas. Before I knew that, I was on cheaper to dirt, and like all of their AR style rifles were out sold out about two three weeks ago well yeah i mean that's so, the thing it's i mean with the, like i said we're we're not going to get into the politics of it but we no, will talk so about the just, facts this the is facts just is, a yeah. observation that i have made right the facts and, are that, that there I'm, is a scare out there that there's going to be a ban scare, you know yeah. and what and what that's doing is it's causing alarmist and it's causing people right. to be overly uh hypersensitive right. and they're going out and they're buying up all the high capacity magazines, all the ARs. I stopped in at uh, one of the local gun stores on my way home from mm-hmm. my mother. Her birthday was the other day. Happy birthday, mom! Yeah, and uh, uh, stopped. It was like seven thirty. The place was packed. Wow! I mean, it was just people were lined up. Yeah, and they said it had been this way every ever since Saturday. Wow. Of course, you know, there was a gun show in town. It's Christmas, right, too. Right, There's right. a lot that we'll attribute to that also. Sure. But not to the extent that, that, that they the guns were flying off the shelf. They mm. actually, the guy told me that they actually mm. had to increase the price um, of their guns because they were selling them so quickly. 
They right. sold 40 ARs that one day. Wow. 40 ARs. That's not counting all the other, you know, guns that they that they sold. Well, back in the 94. So what's that going to what's that going to do to us? I mean to 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 everyone. I mean the right. gun the gun community in general. It's going to drive prices up because yeah. I mean guns were in short supply as it was anyway. Mm-hmm. So now they're going through and they're causing even more shortage undo well, there at are, this point. There's some people out there that are using it as an investment because back in 94 when Clinton put in the full, first assault weapons ban um, I understand. Yeah, it, I understand the guns that. you bought for a thousand bucks once it went banned, they were selling for fifteen grand. I understand that, and that's what people are hoping is going to happen this right. time. Which I hope they get stuck with them. Yeah. I hope they lose thousands yeah. of dollars. I think it's ridiculous that people are going out uh, just because. Uh, well, I don't want to say just because that's a little insensitive, but mm-hmm. uh, well, it's I just think they're, they're being yeah. hypersensitive about it. Okay, yeah. I think they need to. See what's going to happen. They need to band together for one mm. to prevent the you know all these gun bans and things that are coming down the pike. Uh, you know, exercise our right to uh, have our voices heard. Mm-hmm. Get in touch with your congressman, congress lady, and uh, you know point out where your stance is. Sure, whether you are for or against it. You know, either way. Right. Uh, I think um, the people that are for it are going to far outnumber the people that are against it. Um, but I think some people are hesitant to, to you know, take a stance because they they think they will be looked at as insensitive and cruel. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what am I doing with this? What do you take like? a picture? We're we're taking pictures. This is our first podcast. We'll put them on Dude, the on, on the road. web. So Jack me up. What, what was hilarious is like some of the pictures I took. It looks like he's a stoner. Not that I can talk. Have I have I shown you my? My carry permit? I'm not a stoner, by the way. He's not. He's not a stoner. Have you showed you my carry permit? No. Okay. I, oh, I left it. Oh, I don't have it on me right now. It's in another room. Dude, Anyways. Um, you're carrying illegal right now. I'm going to turn you in. I'm, I own this business. <laughs> what is it? The Castle Doctrine is my domain. Um, you know. True anyways, on my on my carry permit, like, I guess you took the pictures. I was standing up, so my eyes are kind of squinty. And I thought, a cop is going to see this and think he got his gun just to protect his stash. Because <laughs> I look stoned out of my mind. <laughs> well, you don't have to protect that anymore because it's, it's going to be legal. Oh, that's true. So that's they're going to legalize pot and drugs, but they're going <laughs> to make guns illegal. So much for our, our politics-free podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Enough. All right. I'm getting so, back on let's my, go. Let's on go my back. deal here. You well, know, we we were having. I was noticing. Okay, that's right. Let me get back. Me oh, get that's your your your, your weekend here. guns. Yes, my observation. So I went to some of these uh, um, companies' web or Facebook. Yeah, 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 yeah. And looking at their likes. Uh huh. So I want to monitor how I'm hoping that they drop. You know, uh, the dicks, the right. chicken and dirt, sure. The, uh, the Bushmasters. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't know where else I went today. I went yeah. to several. But I wrote down what it was as of today, and I'm going to keep track, and I want to see how much they continue to drop. Very cool. Tell people, because looking at the post, I didn't see any any comments or postings that were supportive of what they were doing. Yeah. Well, so that's, that tells me a lot. And I'm going to make this, this will be my last political statement of this podcast, and hopefully for a while. I don't know. Sometimes it gets a little, you, you almost have to say something, but... Gun rights and gun ownership is not a left wing, left wing, not a right wing, not a libertarian, not a Democrat, not a Republican, not a woman, not a man issue. It is a if you are a United States system, United citizen. Citizen, wow, citizen. United States citizen, we'll that out. you have the right to own and bear arms. It's in the Bill of Rights. So it's not a. Whatever, if you're Democrat, if you're Libertarian, if you're Republican, if you're a woman, if you're a man, if you're black, if you're white, if you're Asian, if whatever you are, it's a right you have as a U.S. citizen. And it's the one right that holds up the rest of our Bill of Rights. And and the whole reason that that was put in there is to protect us from the government so that the government could not be more powerful than, the, in, than any one individual. From citizen. all enemies, foreign or domestic. Well, but but that's the reason was that so that a government doesn't get so big, so powerful mm-hmm. that the citizen cannot 
protect themselves. Absolutely. You know, and that's kind of where it's headed right now. Sure. So we're done with politics. We're that's done. It. That's it. Fun from here on out. I promise, Marty. Or I mean, Lefty. You. Pro- oh, I edit that out. We're gonna put a little <laughs> jack wagon. Our, 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 <laughs> if if you hear a animal noise, I edited something out. So just letting you know, left hand. You promise to. I promise. That we'll, we'll be fun the rest of the time. No more Absolutely. politics. Okay. So right. what's our next topic? Product reviews. Product reviews. Yes. And this week, we will just review our first gun. So I'm going to review not my Lorsen 380. I'm going to review my Taurus 357. I'm picking that as my gun that I'm going to review because it is my first gun in my new incarnation of my gun enthusiasm. Um. It is a double action revolver or single action if you cock the hammer back. Uh, five shot revolver, 357. It is stainless. Uh, it's got a nice polish to it. Um, How long is the barrel? The barrel is two inch barrel. It's a you snubby. Got the, you got the snubby. And once again, here comes the geeky side of me. Uh, I didn't realize this when I bought it, but a 357 coming out of this snubby is not going to be any more powerful, uh, slightly more. But the muzzle velocity is not going to be that much more powerful than my 38 because of the short barrel length. Uh, if a lot of people right. out there, if you don't realize, the longer the barrel, the faster the muzzle, mu- the better mu- muzzle velocity you're going to have coming out of the gun. Muzzle, 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 muzzle tough, muzzle tough. Uh, <laughs> the better muzzle velocity you're going to have, and it's going to be a more powerful shot. Um, uh, it's got a little. It's got a nice, very comfortable rubber grip. Uh, it, it's. A, and I need to point out that Zeke is a, a very large individual. I'm six foot seven, so I've got some big old hands. Got some uh, big mitts. If you see, if you ever see a picture of me holding this 357, you would think I was holding like a little toy 22 or something, because I kind of inhale it. Um, but you know, but it, it does have a good size grip on it for someone. It does. For someone your size, it does. Like I can actually said. get my pinky on the bottom of the of the grip, which on a lot of guns, like even on the um, what's the small nine with Glock? Is that the twenty one? Twenty six. Twenty six. Twenty six or twenty seven. I can't stand that. Thirty. I can't stand the the grip hitting me halfway down my hand. I know a lot of people can shoot it, and uh, I've never really tried to shoot it. Extensions, too, right? That and that's probably what I'd have to do. Um, but anyways, uh, you know, it's got the. Um, it's got the cylinder release on the left hand side. Uh, the hammer does not have the firing pin. Uh, one thing I learned about revolvers is the older model revolvers had the firing pin on the hammer. Uh, this one does not. It has the firing pin s- safety bar. Did I say that right? What's the bar? The safety? Where? Uh, the bar in there that. Keeps you from hitting the firing pin unless you I'm pull not the a trigger. revolver guy. Yeah. So, um, anyways, it's a cool gun. It's, again, it's got that, good that's weight. Something our listeners could uh, fill us in on. Absolutely. Okay. Again, we're we're here Let to learn. Know. So uh, yes, when you hear us say something wrong, uh, and I know in, in the internet world, a lot of people will be like, "Oh, you dumbass, you said this." Yeah, Why did I that. sound like Patrick off you, of SpongeBob? You don't have to just tell now. us that. We, we know that. We've, we've already yeah. admitted that, that we don't know everything. We're here to learn. So we, We're proud of our dumb you know, Educate us, but do it, do it in a, you know, a sensible way. Absolutely. Um, so uh, it is a good heavy gun. Uh, and like I was talking about earlier, the, the physics, the geek coming out of me again, uh, the physics with handguns, and actually any rifle in general, the heavier a weight you have – the less recoil it's going to have because the, the, the mass of that gun is going to be absorbing a lot of the recoil. That's why my three fifty seven kicks a lot less than my wife's Taurus thirty eight Special Ultralight because that gun feels like a feather when you're holding it if it's not loaded. But if I shoot that thirty eight, my wrist gets tired. But if I shoot this in three fifty seven, this is a stainless gun. It's got good weight. Mm-hmm. You can feel it. Yeah. I mean, it's got good weight. Absolutely, I hardly feel it at all. Um, so that's a, a, a Taurus. Yeah, Taurus it's a basic is made review. in Brazil. Yep. By the way, Brazilian yep. firearm. Absolutely, and if you don't know Taurus, um, there Beretta used to have a factory in Brazil, and they made their uh, handguns for the Brazilian army. When they closed that factory. 
Taurus bought the factory and became the Taurus that it is today. A uh, little, another little geeky um, study bit. knowledge I had. Colonel, colonel knowledge. Colonel knowledge. That's so, right. um, you know, uh, our reviews are going to get better. I promise, people. You know, this is kind of a makeshift. We're, we're flying by the season. I know this tonight. gun, so I talked as much as I can. We haven't even written down talking points. No, we didn't. So, it, hopefully, this is decent for not having anything written down. So, Marty, uh, what, what's your review going to be on? Uh, I brought a. I got a Glock 23. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I don't know what I could tell people. Everybody knows about Glocks. I mean, there's nothing. This is the mid size. You know, the Glock 23. It's is 20. that pink writing? It's red. Oh, it's red color fill. <laughs> I knew it was red. I was just giving a hard time. Did red color fill. Uh, I've got a little laser uh, on it as well. Um, I like that gun. Uh, it's like I said, it's a good compromise between the the 27 and the 22. Um, I you know I good boot gun. It's more of a backup. It's got really good balance. Yeah, it does. The Glocks are just, I mean, they're solid. There's everything about them I like. There's and I got to remember when radio. I'm sitting here holding it up and looking at the aim and <coughs> doing the old close your eye test where you find a target, close your eyes, lower the gun, you use the lift laser, it back you up, and that. look. Oh, you got good points. Anyways, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um. It doesn't have the night sights. I've just got the uh, the standard white sights with the uh, the horseshoe rear sight. Uh, I tend to like those a little better than uh, any of the other sights that are out there. Just the standard factory uh, sights. Uh, I don't, you know, like doing a whole lot of dolling up to my guns. Like I said, I do like to color coordinate mm-hmm. uh, with the color fill, so I can quickly recognize. You know what caliber I'm dealing with, uh, whether it be the gun or the magazines. Uh, I color fill. Uh, color fill. See, all those. I colored fill my wife's gun because she likes purple. But that is actually <laughs> a really, really good point. You know, I've heard people talk about putting a certain color tape on your magazines. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like that. So your yeah. 40s are all just red. A, just a quick way. Uh, all but one. Okay. Um, I did my 22 in like a zombie green. Gotcha. Um, zombie. To go with my uh, Kel-Tec Sub-2000 that I zombied out. You've seen it. I haven't seen a zombie out. Oh, you haven't? No. You haven't seen a zombie? Okay, I'll have to show that to you. I'll check but, it out. Uh, I did a little zombie package, and it's all in zombie gray. Gotcha. So, but, yeah, otherwise, you know, my 40s are red. My um, um, nines are white. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't really have any other calibers because I don't like to get, you know, in too many different calibers. Right. I did I did pick up a forty five the other day? Uh, Glock. Uh, it was a XDM Springfield XDM. Oh, nice. Um, Bitone. Mm-hmm. Uh, really nice. I haven't had a chance to shoot it yet. Right. Um, I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not. I may it may be trade bait. Gotcha. But I picked I picked that up and I also picked up a uh, a nine millimeter. You mean a, a a nice gun that someone may want to trade you for because they would really enjoy to have that firearm. Possibly, I don't. We didn't say trade bait. <laughs> trade bait. <laughs> if you if you bad? don't know out there, Does that well, mean something? well, you trade know, bait? it's no, it's not bad. But I'm saying, trade you know, bait. just say some guy that gets on arms list oh, all the time uh-huh. starts listening to our podcast and then finds out a gun he got for you, from you that you were talking like it was the best. Oh, I almost said the F word. Best flipping gun Fragging. you've ever had. And then you come on the podcast like, <laughs> trade bait. <laughs> well, it's not that it's not a good gun because they no. are. No, they you are. Know, they've got a completely different balance, mm-hmm. um, you know, center center point than a Glock does. Right. And a Glock just fits me perfect. I mean, I, yeah. No matter which, which caliber it is, mm-hmm. I mean, I've shot all of them. Uh, they just, I mean, it's just, it's like I'm picking up the same gun yeah. all the time, you know. So, And you know... We had this conversation about a month or two ago. I, I've got a Mister Forty Eagle. It's uh, made by Magnum Research. It's yeah. my carry. It's my everyday carry that I get, keep with me all the time. Right. Um, and I told you when I handled it for the first time, I liked it better than the Glocks I had held because mm-hmm. of the the angle. But you said no, go find one that fits your hand, like the length of your hand a little bit better. You might like it. And I think it may have been the twenty six I tried that I didn't like. Mm-hmm. Well, I got my wife the Glock 17, and now I really like it. That's yeah. what's got me leaning more towards the 34, because the 34 is just a elongated slide longer, on the yeah, 17. Barrel, yeah. But the, hand, the the grip is exactly the same as 17. Right. 
So, I mean, I still like my Mr. Ford Eagle. Oh, yeah. 34, you know, they're the same yeah. size. And, and back to the me being newer than you, one of the things, I got the Mr. Ford Eagle. It's cool. It's kind of got the triangulated, triangular uh, slide like the, yeah. the bigger Desert Eagles. It's, um, you know, it's, it's a cool looking gun. It's a Walther P99 clone or Smith & Wesson 99, whichever one, you know, you've got more experience with. It's, same, but it's just a neat gun. But same mill. what I didn't know then mold. that I know now, it's a very rare gun, which is cool to say you have one, but it sucks when it comes to buying holsters, accessories, mm-hmm. magazines. Ugh, it's a pain in the rear. So, so will, the, uh, will the Walther magazines fit that? The Walther P99 magazines will fit, fit, fit it. But the Smith & Wesson won't? Smith & Wesson I haven't tried. Um, but even the Walther P99 is a rare gun. So yeah. that's tough to, you know, f- even find those. Yeah. Like this holster I have is actually a holster. It's a Phobos uh, paddle holster um, that's for a Smith & Wesson 99. Mm-hmm. But this fits it perfect. Yeah. So, Well, you know that my everyday carry is mm-hmm. a Walther also. Right, right. I've got the PPS. Mm-hmm. And I, I really love that gun, too. Right. I mean, it's got just a really good weight and feel uh, to it also. Mm-hmm. It, again, it's more of a backup, everyday carry. It's, right. You know, it's an eight-rounder. Sure. Um, but uh, I like the Walthers, too. Um, yeah. I, I was looking at maybe getting uh, the PPQ, mm-hmm. the Walther PPQ. Right, right. And trying it out. Yeah. Um, so it, it, feel, it feels really nice feels good um i haven't, I haven't shot one yet. and then uh, a mutual guy we know that came from one range to another one that i go to i don't oh, know yeah. if we're going to mention his name yet no, we'll, we'll find out if he wants to but uh anyways he was telling me that he had shot the ppq before and mm-hmm. he loved it he was like hooked when he shot it um so i hear it's a good gun too maybe we can if somebody out there has one if you want to uh meet up with us and lend it to us maybe we can do a review for you so <laughs> hey <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> or or just tell us what you think about it yeah absolutely give, it, give us your data points uh same thing with the glocks and you know any guns we're talking about um you know we're again we're we're gun enthusiasts we're not i'm not stuck on just glocks like i said i've got a wall there i've got some springfields i've got sure. um some smith and wessons so you know i like variety you know i like trying different things out um, yeah we're not we're not gonna be i'm, I'm not gonna push just one brand no. or one you know one caliber or you know anything like that there's uh, there's lots of I'm people open i'm open-minded oh yeah there's lots of people that are die hard glock or die hard 1911 or die hard smith and wesson mps we're not like that. We 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 just love firearms. I'm, it's, glad, I'm it's, glad you brought up the 1911 too, because that's another one that I want to get into. But it's going to be like the AR, and I'm going to get so addicted to it. Yeah, and I, my budget can't take that. Right I now, shot so. a buddy of mine's for the first, first 1911 shot. Oh my god, At the, it, it's nice. It, I mean, yes, it's heavier. Yes, it's kind of a pain to carry if but you want to carry. Classic, but yeah, it's just the it's there's design. so much history to it. That, I mean, we're in Tennessee. And who's from Tennessee? Up in your neck of the woods. Lester. Sergeant. <laughs> York. Sergeant York, who's famous for taking out how many Germans? 100 <sighs> Germans with his 1911 when he ran out of rifle ammo. And the Germans, I they don't know the whole story. I they could be wrong. Yeah, and they eventually surrendered thinking he was a bunch of people, but it was just him and his 1911. You know, that story, I mean, how can you not? I mean, there's a lot of people, oh, 1911 sucks, you got to stick with Glock. And then vice versa, oh, Glock sucks, you got to go to 1911. Yeah. We're not going to do think, that. We're going to be open to anything. Are, people are like us. You know, Absolutely. They're enthusiasts that, you know, they, they want to try. <clears throat> there's going to be extremists in everything and, you talk about. Yeah, you know, they've, they've got open minds, hopefully. No. So, you know, send us some emails. Send us some comments on Twitter. What's our email um, address again? It is talkinglead at gmail.com. T-A-L-K-I-N-G-L-E-A-D. At gmail. At gmail. G-M-A-I-L dot com. com. C-O-M. Okay. That was lower board. Also, Twitter, at talking search talking lead. YouTube's not out yet. That might take a little while. We it's it's getting a little cold. We might do some fun stuff in the snow if we get some snow. But uh, well, we'll we gotta find got some time for that. Today, but uh, the cold was like what? We got I think it was fifty one on the drive here this evening. Yeah. And in Tennessee, That's if you don't bad. like the weather, stick around two days and it'll change. 
because it got cold today. It's supposed to be 65 tomorrow, and then it's supposed to get down to freezing again on Friday. So that's Tennessee nice. for you. It never changes. I mean, it always changes. Yeah. Um, it stays the same. So send us emails, comments. Uh, what we'll do with part of our podcast, we'll be reading some of those emails. We'll even read the ones where you bash the crap out of us because, I mean, we're. Or bash a gun, maybe we're talking about. Oh, or, yeah. Or jump on the Yeah, we'll read them. Gun. And it, it, if you've got a point, we'll go along with you. If, you, if, you, if, you, if you're an idiot, we'll call you out on being an idiot. <laughs> But we'll um, do it. We'll do it. We'll do it in a way. fun way. It's going to be a fun, fun, enjoyable Just thing. Like we don't want you uh, um, haranguing us with. Uh, one big thing we're going to try to do at the end of every podcast is we are going to give everyone a fact to fight the myths. Um, I'll probably come up with some crazy little intro for that. Fact to fight the myths with some background music, something I may have to edit that <laughs> out because that. that sounded really <laughs> stupid. Um, anyways, fact to fight the myth. Each one of us is going to have one fact to fight some gun, gun myth, uh, or misconception every week, uh, towards the end of the show. Um, so this week, my fact to fight the myth is AR does not stand for assault rifle. AR stands for Armalite, and some of you out there may not know that. Uh, when I first started getting into firearms again, I really did. I was one of those idiots that thought AR meant assault rifle. Yeah. Uh, AR is for Armalite. Armalite is a company that made a lot of M16 style. And still do. And still do uh, for the government. Unless um, they're one of the jack wagons that uh, right. are being pressured and um, if you don't know, Colt Colt had the original patent on the M16. When that patent ran out, AR came along, Armalite came along, and made the AR-15. Um, the the military bought a bunch of those. Well, that became such a popular rifle, the name just stuck. The patent ran out, so everybody can make them if they want to. Um, but the AR, once again, if somebody tells you, oh, you got an AR-15, that's an assault rifle. No, assault is a verb. Assault is not an inanimate object. It is a rifle. It is a modern sporting rifle. If you want to start helping the, the gun cause, um, if you want to start helping the gun cause, then stop calling them assault rifles. I hear people that are gun enthusiasts calling them assault rifles. That's scary. Anyways, so once again, my fact to fight a myth is AR stands for Armalite. It does not stand for assault rifle. Left hand? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, am I supposed to come up with a fact now? Yeah, just uh, some fact to fight a myth. Something one one I, fact I'm, I'm that would fight a common. Um, did um, we talk about this? Yeah, we did. did I sent you? it to you in an email. You did. Yeah. Did you give me one. Yeah, and I'm usually the AD one that didn't prepare. Yeah. What, what did you give me? Oh, did I give you a fact to fight a myth? Yeah. No. I didn't do my homework. I'm sorry. You want me to give another one? <clears throat> yes. And, and you can say it was you. Yes. Lefty left the left hand just handed me a fact to fight a myth. And it is it's brilliant. But you know, he just felt like I should read it. So Go ahead. Anyways. Go ahead. Um Let's hear it. Knockdown power. Knockdown power is a myth. Most people that watch movies and see somebody get shot with a three fifty seven, he goes flying backwards twenty feet and lands against the wall, there's blood everywhere. Doesn't happen. So you're saying it's exaggerated. It's exaggerated. In a movie? In a movie. They exaggerate Yes. Something? No. In physics. What does knockdown power mean, Zeke? What is knockdown power? They're the only, about the only caliber out there that would even have the potential of knockdown power would be a fifty caliber. And that would have to be out of a rifle. But stopping power and knockdown power are two different things. People think knockdown power, somebody gets shot with a bullet, they're going to fall down. No, typically, if you watch videos um, in trainings I've been in in the past, I've had to watch a couple of videos where people getting shot. And the reason you hear of cops unloading a magazine into a perpetrator, it's not because of overkill. It's not because they're asshole cops that just wanted to get all happy with their gun. It's because when you shoot somebody, the majority of the time, they don't know they got shot. And they keep the coming. The is so high, or they might be jacked right. up on Mountain Dew. Or and and if you it, go to YouTube and and look at some of the, all up on Dew. <laughs> go look at some of the videos of ballistic gel tests, and that that bullet usually typically goes through unless it's a hollow point and it flattens out and stops halfway through or however many inches in. 
but it doesn't push that gel backwards 20 feet. So if, if something was going to knock down, if, if I had a gun that was powerful enough to knock you down, the law of physics is for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if I shot you with a gun that was capable of knocking you down, it would also knock me down. And that's what you got to remember. Knockdown power is a myth. Stopping power is something totally different, Unless which we'll discuss in another podcast. you've got systems in place on your, on your um, system, your weapon system, to prevent you from knocking down, or you've got muzzle brakes and things like that. Well, that's true. But even then, I mean, it, you, can, you can watch somebody getting shot in a ballistic vest with an AK-47, is, and they don't even movies flinch. Movies exaggerate. Movies exaggerate. The, the that, actual... Knockdown power of some guns, right? It's 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 a stopping power thing. It's not a knock you down thing. And Which typically, got into my argument about, or not my argument, but my point about a nine millimeter and a forty caliber, forty five caliber, and a forty caliber. Right. And remember this too. I heard this from, uh I can't quote him. I don't know who it was. It was it was like a Rob Pincus or somebody in that 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 area. Or maybe it was James Yeager out of here in Tennessee. Um, I can't remember. All handguns suck. He didn't say all handguns suck because they suck as items. They suck as guns. They're fun to shoot. They're, they're good for self-protection. All guns, handguns suck because 86.9% of all people shot with a handgun survive. So... 86. 86. 86.9. One out of every seven. People shot with a Let's handgun survive. That. Yeah. Let's not throw stats at. Yeah, stats there's the stats there. there, and I've heard it once, but you know, it's like around 85, 87 percent somewhere in there. 95 percent of all. One out of every people seven people shot handgun. with a handgun survive. So that's our facts to fight the myths. Along those same lines, we that, that'll probably be the last thing we say in a podcast. Usually, on this one, I want to say after that, find somebody that you know that's anti-gun. Or never shot a gun. Take them to the range. Take them shooting. Um, try to convert them. I want to make a goal for, for, for Left Hand and I every week to take one new person that we don't know. Or maybe that's maybe unrealistic. Once a month, take one person that is anti-gun and, and take them to the range to go shooting. Back to the thing about the ladies shooting guns that are too big that they won't mm-hmm. like. little anecdotal story. Let them shoot something that is a low caliber, even maybe even a twenty two pistol if they've never shot. Because it's fun. They're a blast to perfect, shoot. Perfect but training gun. If you take somebody to a range and you hand them a freaking Smith and Wesson five hundred forty four mag and they shoot it, especially some women, not all women, my wife, she's a petite little lady, but she can shoot a gun. She'll anyway, scare them. It's going to scare him. I was at the range a month ago, and this guy takes his wife to the range, He's hands her a the 500, purpose. the 500 Magnum Smith & Wesson. She shoots it. She screams, slams the gun on the counter, runs oh, out of the range, It'll never be back. and she'll never shoot again. I guarantee it. She will never shoot again. So think about it. If you're going to take somebody new that's never shot, yeah, take it to the range and s- let them shoot something sensible. If you um, just don't like the person and their jack wagon, then give them a 500 and let them absolutely. put a tattoo on their forehead. <laughs> <laughs> Any closing comments? Are we done? Uh, shoot, we're, what, an hour? We never got to talk about Rick's gun. We No, we left it up to them to tell us what it is. Then we'll talk oh, about yeah, it next week. That's right. We'll, we'll be better prepared next time. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll have a, this, is, this is a test run. Like I said, it's the first one. I, I can't wait to a year tell down the road. Tell like our bumper music, too. Yeah. I can't wait to a year down the road to go back and listen to this one after we've been doing this for a while and uh, see how crappy it actually was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so uh, you know, get out there. We got a signature sign out. Be it, be an advocate for for the the gun culture, the gun industry. You know, join the NRA. Uh, you don't have to or just the join the NRA. Or the bow. You, you know, gun owners association, Second Amendment Foundation. There's all kinds of foundations out there. You know, there are. You know, the NRA can get a little political, and if you're not leaning that way, to. then then they have to. Yeah, there's there's other foundations that would fit your your ideals, but there's a foundation for everybody when it comes to the Second Amendment rights. Get out there, join one, support them. Uh, what do you want to sign off with? Yurt. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's an inside joke from where we're from. 
where he's from technically. No, we won't do that. Um, I I, I, there, I, I just, will have to say this. Why do I carry a gun? Bob Maine, the Handgun World podcast, has the best quote I've ever heard. And I won't use this if you're listening. I'm not going to use this every time, but it's my favorite. If somebody asks you why you carry a gun, it's because you can't carry a cop. I love that. Yeah. It's beautiful. Anyways, that's not going to be our sign-off. That's Bob's. Because so when you I need a cop you. right now, they're just short minutes away. Is that where well, Three I, minutes away. I have a buddy of mine that works for a investigative agency. I won't tell which one. But he basically told FBI? me once. No, it, it has an I in it. IBT? <laughs> <laughs> um, but he said cops and, and people like him are more crime historians. There are times when they can prevent crime. If they're at a situation at the right place at the right time, they can't prevent crime. Yeah. But the majority of it's already happened by the time stuff, by the time they get there, yeah. it's over. Yeah. And that's you know one reason <clears throat> why you should carry. Right. Absolutely. You know, I'm a sheepdog. You know, I carry to not only protect myself, but to protect the innocent. So if uh, there's ever a situation that calls for it, right. then I'm going to be prepared. Yep. And, and we'll we'll get into stuff like that too. The legal issues of carrying. Um, one thing I'd like to do sometime down the road is take a Mag Forty class. Um, Masad Ayub, one of the um, foremost knowledgeable people in self defense with uh, firearms, and respected. Yes, well respected. Uh, has has a class called Mag Forty, and it gets into a lot of the legal aspects of carrying a gun. Yeah, uh, so and we'll goes, we'll have a podcast along about with that too. Responsibility of carrying. Absolutely, you, know, you need to know the laws uh, for your area. And, Absolutely. Uh, we'll, again, we'll get into that in another podcast. So, all right. Appreciate everybody listening, and so, looking forward to all your comments. For for the uh, first Talking Lead podcast, uh, that's a wrap. And um, there I go, say um again. Anyways, we will see you next time. It will be a weekly podcast. (laughs) It will be a weekly podcast. I know I was about to sign off and everybody's like, oh, they're done. Oh, no, he's talking again. Anyways, it will be a weekly podcast. We probably won't record next week because next week is Christmas. Uh, So look for us the first week of uh, January. And hopefully this will be up by the end of the world on the 21st, and uh, we'll go from there. So have a good week. Have a good Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Uh, Keep your loved ones close, and we will talk to you later.